theyeshiva.net. It's a great cover for me to call on Rav Yosef Yitzchak Jacobson, otherwise known as YY, Rabbi YY Jacobson, to share Divri Hesped. Thank you very much, Rabbi. Bereshus Harav Agon Reb Reuven Feinstein Schlitter, Bereshus Harav Agon Reb Yonis and Zach Schlitter, Bereshus, the entire prominent, distinguished Tendler Mishpacha, the children, of course, in-laws, grandchildren, <coughs> the whole Mishpacha, friends, and of course, this extraordinary community synagogue. There is a uh, startling and quite intriguing medrash, medrash Rabbah Koyhelis, a medrash on Koyhelis Ecclesiastes, where the medrash says that human life consists of seven tkufos, seven eras. When a child is born, hareyu kemelech. When a child is born, he or she is treated like a king or a queen. Everybody wants to hold them. Everybody is taking pictures. Everybody wants to know how much he weighed, right? You remember? What color hair, what color eyes, looks like mommy, looks like tati, looks like nobody, looks like the elder bub. <coughs> Two years old, I quote the Medrash, forgive me, Hareyu Kechazer. He's basically <coughs> looking for every dirty place in the house. If there's a sewer system, if there's a cesspool, the child is there. If there's ice cream, it has to be spread on the couch, on the new couch, the white couch. Ben Essi turns 10, Areyu Kigdi. Now he's like a goat. A spring tumatum. He's jumping, a flit, a hack. He's a wild goat, an untamed mountain goat, perhaps. Ben Essi, he turns 20, Areyu Kisus. In Yiddish, they would say, In Medrash, it says, Kisus, like a horse, grooming himself, making sure. He's krem de la krem, a handsome young man to be able to find a great shidduch. That's what the Medrash says. Like a horse, wants to be powerful, looking handsome and appealing. And then you get married, and of course, hareyu kachamoy, he becomes a donkey. Somebody got to pay the bills, somebody got to work for a living. Yeah, schlepped and schlepped and schlepped. <laughs> He's schlepping. You get a little older, Baruch Hashem, the family grows and the tuition grows. Medrash doesn't speak about the tuition. But now the bills are astronomical. Now he needs the chutzpah of a dog. Barking, trying to get money just to make ends meet. Finally, his skin. He becomes a zokain. He turns into a monkey. Or a chimpanzee. Or a gorilla. But here the Medrash doesn't explain why. I get the king, I get the swine, I get the goat, I get the horse, I understand the donkey, I understand the dog. But why the chimp? Why the monkey? So the normative interpretation of Mepharshim of commentators is monkeys imitate people. They project, they imitate each other as well. When you become a Zayda, now you have to start making circus shows. Entertainment displays for the Eneklach. You want the grandkids to come to Zaydi and Bubby and enjoy themselves in addition to all the sugar and other healthy things you give them. Zaydi needs to stand and make tricks like a monkey to entertain them. Okay. A balabata shipshat. The Kotzke Rebbe, Shusa Yogan Aleinu, forgive my cough, Rebbe Menachem Mendel Morgenstern. One of the great luminaries of Poland, 19th century, says something else. He says, many people when they become older, they become kekoif. They begin imitating. You know who they imitate? They imitate themselves. I have lived so for 40, 50, 60, 70 years. I'm not about to rethink my life. I become an imitation of myself. I daven today because I davened yesterday and 60 years before. 
I should start now, I should quit Minche Mairev Shachros. I do Shabbos, I do Pesach, I do Sukkot, I do Yom Tev, Purim. I imitate. I brush my teeth every day. I do my Jewish thing every day. No vibrancy. There's no creativity. Hareyu Kekoyf. You start imitating yourself. I become bored of myself. I become a monotonous human being. There's no freshness anymore. There's no hischatrus. Chadoshim Labkorim Rabbi Manasach. The Medrash continues. Avol ben Torah hiskin areyu melech. A king is independent. A real king. An aristocrat, a monarch, a royal person at heart doesn't imitate. You set the agenda. You're a trailblazer. You're a leader. You're not a victim. Hiskin areyu kekoiv zeba amiratsam the Medrash says. Ben Torah areyu melech. There is what you call in Yiddish a shefetish kite. He's not been shepherdish kite with English. Creativity, it's iratiyut. There's newness. It's the courage to reinvent yourself. Geushen is gayer kikotin shenoyla domi. It's the courage to be a real, authentic person. Ad zibula basraisa. And for me, just this interpretation captures at least one angle, one dimension of the great Nifter who we come tonight, Lispoid Velifkois in the words of this parsha, to remember, to immortalize, to internalize. Haravagon, Moshe David Tendler, Zichroin Levracha, Zichatzadik Levracha, Hiskin, Hareyu Kemelech, not Kekoif. Yiddishkeit, life was fresh, creative, not an imitation of other people and not even an imitation of himself. What do they say? All people die originals. I'm sorry. All people are born originals. Most of us die as copies. Rav Tendler was born an original like everybody. <laughs> he also died an original. He remained an original. Some people argued with his originality. That's what happens with original people. But he remained true to originality. I once heard from him, and for me it was moving. He said that one of the great nights of his life, you know, he didn't like drama. He appreciated a good joke. But he didn't like, he said one of the great nights of his life, it was in 1970, and he was being criticized very heavily by certain people in the Holy Land, an issue over Sharit Tzedek Hospital in Jerusalem. It's before my days, brother-in-law must remember. One, one of the stories, he was thinking of moving to Israel, but he was afraid because with such zealotry, you know, what type of Kabbalah's ponim is he gonna get in the airport? Is it gonna be a red carpet or is it gonna be something else, you know? Skillis, Reifa, Herig, Chanek, Malkus. He was hesitant. And generally, he was a younger man then, and it's not comfortable to be criticized, right? We all know that it's nicer to finish a drush and get a compliment than to get criticism. Now, it's not the minig by Eden to give compliments. That's true. <coughs> if you look at the Tanakh, the only Navi who got a compliment was Yoyna, because he spoke to Goyim, all right? The only guy, everybody else, you know, they wanted to kill him. Yoyna was a smart guy. He went to the Gentiles. They love it. Biyoideyo Makire come in, a present company excluded. Rabbi Tendler trained you well. <coughs> well, you have to know Minig, minig Yisrael Toiruhu, you know, you don't compliment. At best, you give a little Yeshikoyach, and also not too dramatic, so nobody should think you can ask them for a favor the next day. And he said that he was invited, he went to visit then, he, was inv he went to visit the Lubavitcher Rebbe, and he spent there a night. They spoke about biology, he said, 90% of the time. <laughs> you know, Rabbi Tender liked to say the truth about himself, but he said, I have to tell you. In biology, I knew everything he spoke about. Physics, he was ahead of me. <laughs> Physics, he was ahead of me. <laughs> but at the end, he said, he spoke to the Lubavitcher Rebbe about his predicament. And he shared the words I want to quote. The Lubavitcher Rebbe told me, it's not the Jewish way to make a decision out of fear. You can't live your life afraid of somebody. 
Don't think too much of what others will say. If you're sure you're right, do what you have to do. You have to be an independent human being. You answer to Hashem. This is even true in the way we serve God. So it became a guiding director for him in his life. He never became that chimpanzee. He never became that monkey. There was no social conformity. There was freshness, creativity, as Rosh Hashiva, as his Shvagr Shlita said. No preconceived notions. I don't even imitate somebody else. Great person. I want to know Ma Hashem Lekecho Shoyel Meimach right now. Or maybe as Reb Chaim Valozhina put it best in Ruach Chaim on Pirkei in the first chapter when Chazal teach us Heve Misavek Ba'afar Ragleim Veve Shoyse Vatsoma as Devreim May your home become a home filled with Torah, filled with sages. Veve Misavek Ba'afar Ragleim How do you translate it? Vizok Me Misavek of English. Literally. Misavek. Rabbi Zaks, I need your help. Miss Abek. What did Rabbi Arya Kaplan say, huh? Nobody here in this shul. Nobody could translate Miss Abek in English. Okay, the heavy Miss Abek means literally you should entangle yourself in the dust of their feet. Spend time in the dust of their feet and drink their words with thirst. But Rabbi Chaim Valajna says, Miss Abek comes from the word in Vayishlach. Which means to wrestle, to battle, to quarrel, to confront. His apkus, a man wrestled with Yaakov till dawn break. The heavy misabek, says Reb Chaim Valoshener, incredibly powerful idea. You have to be able to have the courage to quarrel with your teachers, with the sages with the people you respect, but always with a profound sense of humility. If it becomes about pride, arrogance, hubris, narcissism, selfishness, ego is easing God out. You lost the plot. The heavy misabek, because you're searching for truth. You're searching for MS and MS is infinite. Teres Hashem Tmima, Zak the Baal Shem Tev, Loi Naga Ba Adam Me Oilam. Imagine a birthday cake, La Havdil, that Jews have been nibbling on for 3,300 years. I don't think there's anything left. It's like sushi by the Kiddush. Zak the Baal Shem Tev, after 3,300 years of Torah, Tmima, Loi Naga Ba Adam Me Oilam. It's untouched. How can you say this? Because it's infinity. And infinity, you can have one, a million, a billion, you don't get closer to infinity even if you have a hundred billion because infinity by definition is ein soif. Therefore have a misabek. I'm looking for the truth and I want to fight for the truth with absolute courage and resolve. But ba'afar ragleim. Always appreciating the need for humility, the need for bittel. The appreciation and the ultimate absolute respect for my teacher and this unique fusion. Not so common today. I think we saw in the life, in every sheer lecture, seminar, workshop, PowerPoint presentation, and certainly the regular shiurim in shul and in yeshivas of Anitzak al Khanan and in all the shiurim around the world, by the great Nifter Haraf Tendler, Zechroin Nelivroch, without fear, without reservation, have a misabek, he believed. As both Rosh Hashivas brought out beautifully, you have to maximize your potentials to the greatest, greatest measure. Never to surrender to mediocrity. Not only do it, but do it best. Master it. We liked a good quip, a good joke, so forgive me. Yogi Berra's wife once asked him, you're laughing already, you don't even know what happened. But you know it's going to be funny, right? Yogi Berra's wife once asked him, she said, Yogi, tie it a Yogi. I have a big dilemma. I have a Suffolk. Here's the problem. You were born in Missouri. You live in New Jersey. But you play for the New York Yankees. Where should I bury you? He looked at her and said, surprise me. 
There's two ways of living. There are people who don't surprise anybody and they don't surprise themselves either. Rabbi Tendler believed in surprising yourself. Laughter comes only from the unexpected, says the Balatanya, from the surprises in life, from the fact that I don't want to imitate myself. I think there was something else that characterized his leadership, his teachings, his persona. It's what Reb Meir Shapiro, the Rubliner Rav, the founder of Daf Yoimi, once told a Rav who came to him for advice. This is, of course, pre-war Poland. And it was Parshish Kisis, and he opened up a Pasuk, a Chumash. And he said, it's all right here. Moshe asks Hashem, I want to see you. And the Rebbeinu Shalom says, It's one of those extremely mystical and mysterious psukim in the Tanakh. There's a space with me, and you stand on the rock. But when my glory passes, I will place you and hide you in the cleft of the rock. Said Reb Meir Shapiro, and I think Rav Tendler, Zichroin of Racha, was a living embodiment of this. He said, every Rav will encounter two different situations in life. He named There are situations, there are spaces that are connected to me. There are Mekoymas where I am. Where my presence is on the line. Vinitzafta alatsur, then your role is to stand on a rock, like a rock, with unwavering conviction, absolute commitment, because it's makayim iti. And he told, if it's a question of Yerushalayim, if it's a question of chinuch habonim vahabonis, of educating a new generation, if it's a question of taras habayis, purity of the home, holiness of the home, holiness of a future generation. If it's a question of mikveh or kashrus or shabbos. If it's a question of hinei mokoim iti. V'nitzavta halatsur. Stand on a rock like a rock. Not because you're arrogant. But because you were chosen to be a conduit. To be a spokesman for Dvar Hashem Zuwalacha with humility, with love, but with inner confidence and strength. Ah, what a good advice for rabbis. Rabbi Leibowitz, tell me if you agree. Once my covet is gone, now the Samticha Benikras Hatsur, now you could also go into hiding. The Dafsnish Zen. The dafsnisht head in. Once the question is, the wallpaper in the shul, the kiddush is going to be with kichlach or jalapeno herring or plain herring. You know that shul's debate is Rabbi Feinstein. In, in the Lower East Side, they still have these debates too. I thought the Lower East Side was immune because of the impact of your great father. Once it becomes my personal honor, once it becomes my personal ego, insecurity, issues, we all have issues. You could be a little deaf, you could be a little blind. Don't make things personal. Be a leader. Don't be, reduce yourself to insecurity. Don't reduce yourself to pettiness, to smallness. Your job in this world is to bring out the best in people by being bringing out the best in yourself. That unique fusion, that unique combination, very rare. I think so many of us saw and admired in Hagon Reb Moshe Tendler, Zechet Tzadik Levracha. If I may say one more point about him, and that is, in Yiddish there's a word, Breitkeit. In English, we call it broadness, expansiveness. We live in a world of tremendous learning, and we have to thank Hashem for this. I was uh, right before Corona in the Colorado in the yeshiva, the yeshiva is Rav Kagan, Talmud of Rav Aaron. And he tells me, we were standing there at the reception, and he starts sobbing, Ayid starts crying, and he tells me, I heard from Rabbi Yameir Bloch, the tells of Rosh Hashiva, who told me that in 1942, he was walking in the Lower East Side of Manhattan, and there was an Alta Yid 
who was a moich svarim. He was a Europe, European Jew. He sold svarim. What parnasa he made to medveis in 1942. But he sold svarim. And he sold books also. It's one of those guys that you try to help them by buying a safe. You know, it's not like you needed the safe. You just knew the guy needed challah for Shabbos. And the Belyameyah Bloch passes this Jew. And the Jew says, Rebbe, he says, Rebbe, 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 for a quarter, for a quarter, I'm going to sell you a precious book. And he gives him a ktsois And he tells him these words in Yiddish. This is the last ktsos was wet verkauft werden in America. Halt es teuer. Halt es teuer. Halt es teuer. This is the last ktsos that's going to be sold on the shores of the United States of America. Hold on to it. Cherish it. Don't discard it. This is going to be a timeless antique. And I'm giving it to you for a quarter because nobody's going to buy it. And Rabbi Kagan told this to me and he was just sobbing. And I understood why he was sobbing. He was both sobbing because of it's an emotional story, but he's also sobbing from the joy of the miracle of transformation. And Rabbi Tendler was born in 1925, right? You follow? 1925, in the Lower East Side. Saw, saw that transition, saw that transformation firsthand. Lived it, breathed it, celebrated it, contributed to it, fought for it. I have to say, it was a sad moment, but one of the greatest moments at the Hespedim, at the Levaya, was when the Rosh Hashiva Reb Ruven Schlitter said that he had a dream. He wanted to become a chicken farmer. You heard that? I didn't know that. I want to know now what was your father's dream? <laughs> what was the Zayda's dream? Wasn't that great? He wanted to be on a farm. We still have in Monsi those farms. And raise chickens. You would run the Kapotas out of Yom Kippur and the Hasidic neighborhoods here. And his brother-in-law, Rabbi Tendler, didn't scream at him, didn't rebuke him. He just explained to him that in an era of the 1940s, early 1940s, I assume late 1940s, what we need are spiritual doctors, soul doctors, teachers, Jews who cherish Judaism are going to inspire a new generation. Well, the results are obvious. Thank God for that conversation with your brother-in-law. But it's always good to know what Rabbi's real dreams are. And you probably hear it in their speeches and their shiurim, even without Freudian analysis. Why am I talking about the chicken farm? Oh, he celebrated it. But sometimes people learn, and let's call it tunnel, this tunnel vision, very, very narrow. A lot of narrowness. It's called celebration of narrowness. And the more narrow I can be, somehow the more holy it feels. It never felt right to me. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't fit in with Arucha Eretz Mida or Rechava Miniyam. We heard the Rambam and say that Torah Perik Beis. If the divine is at the core of every atom and every cell and every genome and every neuron and every nook and cranny of existence, Meloi Chala Eretz Kvoide and Einoid Malvadoi. And that's just in the sciences and in the physics. Wherever you turn in the micro and the macro, the wisdom, the brilliance, the intricacy is astounding. Torah, which is the blueprint for creation. Torah, which is the makir habri, as the Nefesh Achayim always talks about. Istakel boy raiso bora alma. Where is the infinity of Torah? The expansiveness of Torah that encompasses everything. Well, I loved hearing a shiver by Tendler. You saw that expansiveness. Again, the freshness, the creativity, even those PowerPoint presentations. I remember he once explained, Hasaya for Hasefer Yordu Kruchin Yachad Minashamayim as the double helix of the DNA molecule. Now, people don't know about the double helix of the DNA molecule, usually don't know about Hasefer for Hasaya for Yordu Kruchin Minashamayim. And people who know about the Sefer for Hasaya for Yordu Kruchin Minashamayim don't often know how to speak about the helix of the DNA molecule. Well, for some of us, for many of us, it was extremely refreshing to be able to learn of a Judaism that is never, never afraid, not only to confront every modern question, but to become the blueprint, the divine blueprint that navigates the human being in the 20th and 21st century. 
through the most cutting edges developments in every area of life, of course, science and biology and physics, and never mind cosmology and astrophysics, and today psychology and quantum mechanics and the convergence of all of it. And to be able to understand that the Torah is that blueprint, the roadmap for every great dilemma and great question. You don't have to run here and you don't have to run there in the two extremes. Asayfer v'asayif, Yardukruchim and Hashemayim. He was that embodiment of the Mishnah in Prikayavis. Amar Reb Yaakov, Hamahalech Bederech, Vishoyinu Mafsik Mishnah Siv Oimer, Manoi Ilan Zeh, Manoi Nir Zeh, Ma'ilo V'akosov Kilo Mishchayiv B'Nafshay. A Jew is taking a hike and he's learning. And he interrupts his learning and he says, wow, what a beautiful tree. What a splendid landscape. You're endangering your soul. And the commentators can't understand. A Jew is taking a hike on the Beer Mountains. Kakiat Park. Beautiful landscapes we have here in Rockland County. Or anywhere in the world. And you're learning. You're learning. Maybe you're listening to a shir. Maybe you're thinking about something. You're schmoozing with a friend, with a child, with a chavrusa. And suddenly you see an extraordinary landscape and you stop. And you say, how beautiful, how splendid. You're endangering your life. Aren't there brachas that our sages instituted in Masech the brachas? Aroya. Unnatural phenomena. Aroya yamagodl. Aroya keshel. Whatever the phenomena is, there's brachas. Didn't David HaMelech extol these, extol nature? We Marabu kulum says we dedicate time in Pesukah de Zimra for this daily. Barchi nafshi is Hashem is a whole chapter dedicated and many more. What's Mishayev bin nafsha? There's an answer I once saw. I don't know the original author of the answer. Maybe the Rosh Hashiva will tell me afterwards. I saw this years ago. Unbelievable answer. He said it's one word. Umafsik b'mishnosa. You're hiking. You're learning. You interrupt the learning. And you say how beautiful is this tree. For me to extol the beauty of God's world is an interruption of learning. There's no singular continuum. But the Yisrael of Yiddishkeit, as the Gemara says in Psachim, is ain't Kiddush, Ela b'mokim suda. Literally it means if we make Kiddush here, we have to start having the meal here. Spiritually it means ain't Kiddush, Ela b'mokim suda. Kiddush in Yiddishkeit, is not abstract, transcendent, heavenly, celestial, segregated. Kedusha Yiddishkeit is b'mokoim su'uda. It informs, it enlightens, it sublimates, it elevates the feast of life, the material and physical of life. There's no mafsik mimishnasa. Ein oid mulvadoi. Ato mechayes kulam. Ato sises hashamayim. The presence of the ribayin shaloylam saturates, fills, vibrates through every elon, through every near. It's not an interruption of Torah. It's the manifestation of Torah in a real concrete world. Rab Tendler was the embodiment of that statement. It's actually a brisk of art. But I heard it from the Lubavitcher Rebbe. And he said, and I quote, he was saying a siyum on, a siyum on chulin. And he said, Bayidin is chulin oich in seide kochim. Bayidin is chulin oich in seide kochim, val chulin is oich adin in kochim. By the Jewish people, Mesech is chulin, which means the mundane, the choil. It's not the carbonus of the Beis Hamidish, it's also in seide kochim. Because ain't kiddush elabamakim suda. Kedusha is not only in the heavens, Kedusha is the ultimate reality of the entire cosmos, and therefore, the chulin of life is just another way of manifesting kachim. Bechol drachecha de'eyu, as the Rambam in Hilchas Deyus, Peri Gimel, explains the Pasuk, and the Shulchan Aruch in Reish Lam and Aleph and Archaim. In closing, may I conclude with an insight I saw by your grandfather, by the Rosh Hashiva's father, by Rav Tendler Shver, Zechat Tzadik Levrocha. In Dorash Moshe, Hagon, Hagodul Rav Moshe Feinstein, Zechat Tzadik Levrocha, writes on Parshas Chayesara these words, which I think represent a fourth 
and final point I would like to make at this special evening. Vavram zokin bobayomim vashem beirach es Avram bakoil. Zok drashi. Hashem blessed Avram with everything. Beautiful line. I think the Pesach makes sense. He blessed him with everything. Whatever a person can ask for, the man had. The Gemara says in Baba Basra, the end of the first Pesach, Hit imon ha-kadosh baruch haba, bakkoil, mikkoil, koil. Rashi says no. Bakkoil begematria bain. Bakkoil is the numerical value of 50. Lamed and chaf, nun beis, 50 and 2. It's the numerical value of a son. Vashem Beirich Esavram Baben, he gave him a child. And the child was 40, and he didn't have a shidduch. Asks Reb Moshe, Agutakash. I don't understand. So just write, Vashem Beirich Esavram Be Yitzchak. Okay, Yitzchak is too long, just write Beben. Bakoil and Baben is exactly the same amount of letters. Torah likes to be brief, I got it, not like rabbis. Fine, if you could say it short, don't say it long. Got it. Baben and bakoil. What do I need a bakoil? Now I need a gematria. Just say it. It's not like we don't know about Yitzchak. <laughs> Lech Lecha Avram prayed and Sarah hoped. And Vayera Avram prayed and Sarah hoped. And finally they were blessed. Vashem, we know about Yitzchak. Vashem Benechas Avram. Be Yitzchak, Beben. Great question, no? You probably heard it live from your father. So Reb Moshe Zatzal in Dorash Moshe says that the Torah doesn't write Baben because you would lose the point. The Torah says, Vashem Beirich Esavram Bakoil. He gave him everything. Now Chazal come and tell you, what does it mean to have everything? What does it mean to have everything? Well, we all have our answer for that. Come Chazal and say, I'll tell you what it means to have everything. It means to have a child. Because there are people who have everything, but their children are estranged and they have nothing. And there are people who have nothing, but they have a child who's attached, who's connected, and they have everything. You could say Hashem blessed him with a child. You missed the point. He blessed him with everything. Because I'll say, you know what for Avram was everything? And don't underestimate. It's not like Avram at Garnish Gahat. Avram was a world leader. He was a prince of God. He was a religious revolutionary. He was the first monotheist. The Meiri says that he and Sarah changed half of human civilization of the time. The Rambam in Avoy Desoret describes traveling from city to city, country to country, holding press conferences and lectures. The first one to talk about the Rebbeinu Shalala. Avram Avinu fought wars. Avram Avinu was the greatest host of a generation. Avram Avinu was the greatest teacher, the greatest Maimon, the greatest Baal Mesiris Nefesh. Asari Nisyonis. And even the Bnei Chai say, you're a prince, you're a melech. No, such a person could look at his resume and say, not so bad. And you look today, Rav Tendli used to say, people, the Bible fabricated. He says, just look at the psukim. You had to be an idiot to write these things if you weren't God. Here's a little guy, Akleina Yidala, who commanded no army, who had owned barely territory when Sarah died. He had nothing, despite all the promises. And whoever authored this book says, by the way, every nation on earth is one day going to see you as the source of blessing. 2021, you see close to half of human civilization considers themselves spiritual ears of Avram Avinu. Pretty powerful legacy for one man. Comes the Torah and says, but you know what for Avram meant everything? Bakoil? Edgar had a kind. He had a child. He had a child, Yitzchak, who not only followed Avram Avinu, but became an embodiment, Torah delay, became an embodiment in his own unique, inimitable way, Midas HaGvura, Pachad Yitzchok. That was the Bakoil. This is the commentary of Reb Moshe. He said it, he said it in Yeshiva Mustam. He didn't have to say it. <laughs> he didn't have to say it, that's the point. When I look at the children of Rav Tendler, 
when I look at the whole mishpacha, I see that Hashem Beirach is Reb Moshe Bakoil. A busy man, a professor, a Rosh Yeshiva, microbiology, Shasim Poskim, Chosha Mishpat and Evanezer, medical ethics, genetics, the Lebedic life, creative, scientific, successful, productive, scholarly, top shiurim in Yeshiva Saben Yitzhak al and top lecturers in the secular scientific community in Columbia, Yeshiva College, and around the world. But he understood what often people don't understand, that the Bakoil by Eden is the attachment to your children, the way he invested in his children. I saw how the children spoke about him during Shiva. I saw how they emailed me about him. You see, sometimes professors, Rosh Hashivas, they're big, they're brilliant. But the children at the end say, he wasn't my father. You know, he was, the shul loved him, but in the house, you know, I'm not going to be Meirich on this, but trust me, it's a phenomenon. In fact, some very successful rabbis are so successful because they run away from the house and they spend in shul, you know, the shul loves them, but in the house. But when it comes to Hilchis Avaidus Yem HaKippurim, how does the Rambam end it? He says the Kohen Gadol finished the Avaida, and what did he do when Yem Kippur was over? He went home. Flagging the Mepharshim, this is a halacha. <laughs> of course he went home. Yem Kippur is over. Where should he go? To the bowling alley? Where should the Kohen Gadol go Mitzvah Yem Kippur? For pizza? What, what do you want? Of course you go home. A good Kasha. I know he went home. It's a fact. But the Rambam puts it in a halacha. The pshat is it's a halacha. <laughs> I heard from my Rebbe that it's a halacha. What's the halacha? When you go into Kodesh HaKadoshim, it's very easy not to go home. You go home and you know what your wife tells you, yeah? Take out the garbage. Uh, excuse me, I was in Kodesh HaKadoshim today. <laughs> Listen, my dear, just take out the garbage. I had a harder day than you. You were in Kodesh HaKadoshim and I was with your kids in Mach Meshiga. <laughs> <laughs> Which is hard? I don't know. I know the Ketoyeris was hard. But your 11 kids are harder, my dear Kohen Gadol. Do me a favor, take out the garbage and make dinner for yourself. Lahavdal in the secular world, the rock stars, they come home to such a wife, they can't deal with it. The Rambam gives a halacha. Ain't kiddush alabamakim suda. Umad, there's no mafsik mimishnose. How do I know you were Yim Kippur in Kodesh HaKadoshim if you can go home? If you can sit down on the ground and play handball with your child. Thank you, the women understand. Thank you for the feedback. <laughs> They're all going to go home afterwards, I promise you. We're not letting anybody stay over tonight. We're sending them all home. Reb Moshe David Tendler was a man of the world. He was a colorful man. He had a universal scope and universal vision. But he knew that the great duty of a father, of a mother, is to go home and raise a generation that continues that legacy with love and with passion and as his entire family is doing until the great moment when Malah Haaretz Deyes Hashem, Kamayim Layam Mechas, when that unity will be revealed in the whole world. Bimheira Amenu, Amen. Thank you. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.